Hi everyone, today is another episode of the BTW Show and this week we are going to be talking about what real interior designers do versus renovators. There's a distinct difference and it's not just about qualification. Watch on to find out more. Before we get started on today's topic, if you haven't subscribed, consider hitting the subscription button at the bottom right. I started this channel with the intention of creating contents that are dedicated to anything and everything related to design. I have a Mandarin talk show about horoscope and home design and there are other projects that are underway. So hit the subscribe button at the bottom right. It will be a tremendous encouragement to me. Thank you. Number one. Not all designers are home renovators. Now, if I say the word renovation, the first words that may come into your mind could be HGB or home renovation or cowboy contractors. Renovation is a generic term that is used to describe the rebuilding or remodeling of a space. And hence, we do more than just homes. Spaces like restaurants, hotels, retail shops and boutiques are designed and built by people like us. In fact, there are commercial designers that only specifically handle commercial projects and never in their span of their career ever once touch a home renovation project. So the main reason most people tend to associate designers and renovation to home remodeling is largely due to the way Singapore's home buying culture. More than 80% of homes are in HDB and because of these numbers and frequencies, everyone who is a HDB homeowner will have to engage with a designer or a renovator to do up their homes. For these first-time homeowners, hunting for a good deal, going to showrooms, talking to designers or renovators has become a rite of passage. And for some unfortunate homeowners, they end up with bad experiences. And so, because of these bad experiences, it has somehow affected our industry and help perpetuate this impression that designers only do home renovation and we are part of the renovation scam club and are out to make your life a living nightmare. Point number two, so why is renovation such a nightmare? As a disclaimer, I must state that there are many reasons leading to this. I can only name a few reasons and it may not represent the true data on the ground. As mentioned earlier, Home renovation is like a rite of passage for all first-time home buyers. So being first-time buyers doing renovation, there is this sense of euphoria as well as excitement. This usually leads to impulse buying and essentially home renovation is an emotional affair. Logic usually makes way for first-time home renovations. Then you have the designer or the salesman. Now if this designer is indeed a graduated interior designer from a reputable design school, then he or she could either be a seasoned pro or a freshie. If this person is a freshie, then likely you will have a situation where the blind will lead the blind. That's when the nightmare begins. So just imagine this, the freshie hasn't bought or owned their first property, much less renovated their own home. And yet, they are put in a position to design and build your property. Under such circumstances, whatever could go wrong is definitely going to go wrong. I mean, would you get into a plane flown by a pilot who only know the theory of flying but has never flown before? Of course, I can't say that there will not be situations where fresh graduates will not rise to the challenge and perform beyond expectations. But ask yourself this, how often does this happen in life? For those responsible renovation firms, they will usually pair a freshie with a seasoned and senior staff so that there is some form of mentorship. This buddy system will mitigate risks and they will help blind spot each other. The freshie will have fresh ideas and may even inspire the jaded seniors design staff, while the senior staff can troubleshoot and guide the junior staff to avoid issues or loss. 3. Profiteering as a designer or salesman. 
Then you have another scenario where the designer serving you is not designer by formal training, but by experience. In Singapore, we have a unique system of hiring these salesmen or sales designers to push for sales numbers, and the company does a profit sharing system with them. In a typical home renovation project, the profit margin is around 20%. So let's assume it's a 30,000 renovation and the profit is around 6,000. With a profit sharing scenario of 50-50, the company gets to keep $3,000 and the sales designer keeps the other half. In many of these instances, these sales designers are not salary at all. Their only source of income is the profit markup and the profit share of the company. Let's just take a minute to digest this information. The person serving you is not only not formally trained in design, he or she is only incentivized in working on your project through a profit share pay scheme. In this scenario, I personally find that there are potential conflicts involved. An example, if profit is what everyone in the company is after, when does the integrity of the design work or materiality come in? In the pursuit of profits, will the designer or salesperson still propose innovative, unique, hard to do designs and will it come with better materials, finishes and hardware? This method of remuneration for design staff in this part of our industry has been in practice since the late 1990s. I personally do not think it is the right way to sustain the industry and the practice. In fact, profit sharing models usually means that the company will erode their cash flow in the long run. While it seems like not having an overhead to sustain the team sounds like a good idea in the first place. But just think about the fact that the firms are actually not preserving their cash in the company. How then does the company grow and recruit talents? And isn't it weird to hand out profit share to salespeople and not partners? When the pursuit of the design is compromised by the pursuit of profits, then the standard will definitely drop. Just have a look around at some of the international design awards organized by our local associations. You will find that foreign design entities have been hogging the limelight and winning all the big prizes across the board. While the low numbers of award winners may not be a direct relation to how the home interior design renovation industry pays their staff, there is definitely an impact one way or another because the innovation is stifled Creativity is a troublesome affair and not encouraged. Doing the minimum to get by is the best way to ensure profitability from the business point of view. This must change and we are already seeing the impact of the internet changing the way consumer behaves. More and more consumers are reading up and getting familiar with the materials, design concepts, prices and some don't mind going the extra mile to hunt for the type of materials, hardware to enhance the value of your home project. And the keyword here is value, not just price. So to the fellow practitioners watching this, do not make the mistake of equating the price as value. Far from it. The clients we have today is not only savvy, but has already woken up. To me, they are no longer the blind being led by the blind. In fact, in the last few years, we are seeing the emerging pattern of them leading the design and material usage in their own home projects. And the role these firms they engage are merely facilitating and offer little value creation other than providing manpower. Point number four, the home ID business is flawed. In 2019, based on records, there are about 14,500 units of brand new BTO flats released. Let's not forget the resale homes that are transacted for 2019 and it's around 23,714 units. For non-landed private homes, the number of transactions is around 2,950 units. So if we take these numbers from 2019 and add them all up, we get about 41,164 units that are released or transacted. So let's assume that each of these units go through some form of renovation and using $25,000 as an average spending amount per unit. The total renovation spending for non-landed and HDB projects works out to a whopping $1.029 billion in 2019 alone. To give some context to this, our local F&B industry is worth about $893 million for the year of 2019. For a $1 billion industry, I find the current state of affairs quite troubling. 
We have renovation licenses issued for the carrying out of renovation work only for HDB projects. For private homes, no such licenses are required. To open up an interior design company or practice here, there is also no need for you to possess relevant qualifications to register our type of business. In fact, the renovation firm that you currently work with could be totally run by salespeople with no experience or qualification in design or renovation and will only outsource their design work and renovation work to subcontractors. Let me explain with a simple graphic. As you can see, this chart shows how you, the client, engage them and how these firms in turn engage their subcontractors to do everything from the drawings to the tiling work to the carpentry works for your home. This kind of middleman business model with a profit share scheme has been the modus operandi for many of these firms for more than two decades in Singapore. They largely operate like a shell business and perform like an agent. There are other accreditation schemes like case trust and some from the industry associations that may be coming up, but they are just an accreditation scheme and are not mandatory nor regulated by the authorities. The irony is that our industry is actually worth more than the F&B industry, yet the F&B industry has more regulatory framework than ours. In fact, home renovation has the lowest entry barriers. Most of these home renovation firms recruit people who do not need to possess relevant skills as well. In fact, they prefer freshies who have no knowledge and skills and favour those who can speak well. This explains why when you head out to some of these home renovation firms, you find a lot of foreign staff who play the role as a designer when in fact their previous job could be MLM sales. I just want to take this chance to explain the flaws and failings in this industry. Home renovation consumers need to know and only when the buying power from the top of the food chain knows about the ways in which these home renovation firms function, operate and conduct their businesses, only then can the consumer begin to make an informed choice. Your decision in appointing a firm that values design integrity invest in staff grooming and progress is ultimately going to help make an impact in the long run. Errant businesses will learn these values and adapt in order to survive as well as grow. What better time than now? The COVID-19 lockdown is already clearing the landscape and is forcing many of us to re-establish the way we work. So why not take this opportunity to use your voice as a consumer to change the game with us? Remember that we are all pursuing value here. For the serious practitioners, we want our industry to grow, to innovate and to groom the next generation of designers who can make a difference in the society. We believe that we can make our money and still give you what you want in a fair, dignified and transparent way. So let's start talking. I hope you've enjoyed today's sharing. This vlog will ruffle some feathers in the community. But hey, if not now, when? If not me, who? Subscribe. Leave a comment and give me a like if you enjoy this content. Thank you and I'll see you guys real soon. Goodbye.